Hi, it's good to have you here for this fireside chat in my kitchen. Um, I wanted to say a big thank you, as I always do, to Judy Zerubic, who's on the other end of this recording, as uh, she makes all the tech work and does so with good humor and cheerful demeanor, even when she might be grumbling underneath her breath uh, out of my sight. But nevertheless, thank you, Judy. Um, I also want to say thanks to Rod Coates for I have some pandemic puns that I'm going to share. Now, don't worry, as there are other jokes mixed in with the puns. Now, I know that many of us in Ontario are rather glad that the border between Canada and the United States is closed except for essential goods and services. But what about Finland's border? Locally, physical distancing can be made easier using this technique. Most of the day, however, we are staying inside to protect others. While inside the house, many are learning how to cook better. Now, I don't know how many of you um, remember the Spice Girls. Uh, yet those of us with dogs know that they have to go for walks frequently. I don't know if you remember the song, Who Let the Dogs Out? Who, who, who? Anyway, when we go outside, there are signs we haven't gone anywhere for a while that might seem rather surprising. Some have enjoyed the indoors by snuggling up with a good book. When we think well into the future, will we be changed? Of course, our current grocery shopping is quite different these days. What's it like in France? I know, they're all pretty lame as puns usually are, but that's what tickles my funny bone. And once in a while, I get a little bit of freedom to share my weird sense of humor with you all. Um, however, this has been a tough week. After the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis over a week ago, after all the protests by so many, after the opportunistic looting and vandalism by some, we certainly have seen television footage of the debris left behind. I know my own despair because of the plight of people with black or brown skin in our society. While we as Canadians have often breathed the sigh of relief that we do not have the same racial tensions our American neighbors do, we must pay closer attention to the injustice or else it will continue to eat away at our society and at our souls. I was deeply moved by what my son shared on his Facebook page. Ken is an electrician and a quiet man who never forces his opinions on others, takes life as it comes and makes the best out of any situation. But here is what my son wrote on his Facebook feed. I've struggled with what to put out into the world today about the protests going on right now in the States, about police brutality, and the systemic suffering of people of color. I'm generally a private person and don't really use social media to post about my stances on issues. I don't see myself as an activist. One thing I am learning through all this is that is not okay. I am a cis white male and have all the advantages. It is my job to amplify and to support those who have not had the same advantages. It's not enough for me to be not racist. I have a role to play by being anti-racist. So as I move forward to amplify and support, understand that it's not me you need to listen to. The people of color in your community are talking and we need to listen. And this is where he was on Wednesday evening.
As a dad, certainly I worried about his safety in a crowd like that during a pandemic, despite the mask he wore. But I was powerfully aware that he needed to walk with his neighbors against such injustice in our society. When I read this passage from Isaiah, the prophet is speaking about the divine call to look out for the other person for justice. Notice the command to seek justice. Notice that in seeking justice, there is an imperative to defend the oppressed. In the end, God is sitting us down to have a long talk so that we begin to understand what is right. Not just to come to a different understanding, but more importantly, to act on the need for justice. In fact, if you look at this short passage from Proverbs, which is one of our Bible's books of wisdom sayings, we are commanded to speak up for those whose voices have been silenced. Indeed, poverty is not only of financial resources, but of humanity, of opportunity, of equity, and of love. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, we have flown like birds and swum the sea like fishes, but have yet to learn the simple act of walking the earth like brothers. Maybe this video across, put together by hundreds across many nations can help us to decide how to act in hope.
these growing protests certainly constitute a storm. But it is a storm that has been brewing for centuries and continues to break out periodically like an exploding pressure cooker. The words of the song tell us to hold our head up high, but if you do so, you get shot when you're black or brown. Hope is fine and dandy, but it doesn't create the space within which justice can roll down like a mighty river, as Amos prophesied. Instead, we must educate ourselves. We must listen to the stories and to the voices of people of color. We must also act so that people of color don't walk alone. This is not just in the United States. Consider this reality. Amy Cooper is a product of Canadian society. Her white privilege speaks loudly about how far we have to go as a society. We must not forget Isaiah's call to justice for all people. Consider this tragic reality in Toronto. So many killed. And at a fi far higher proportion. Or the injustice described by this statistic. Justice must reign here too. While Black Lives Matter we have an even longer history of injustice to our indigenous neighbors. They too are living in fear. If you're not sure about this statement about the RCMP, read the history of Louis Riel, of the colonization of the West in particular, of the residential school system to where indigenous children were taken by RCMP officers under the orders of the Indian agents. After all, it has been five years, that's right, five years since the National Truth and Reconciliation Royal Commission published his final report. Five years and not much has changed. Ask those populating the barricades earlier this year in solidarity of the Wet'wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. Indeed, it has been one year and two days since the final report of the Royal Commission on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls was published. Still, little more than promises have been given while Indigenous women continue to die. And how much of the despair of Indigenous women did those women carry deep in their hearts because their children were stolen from their arms? What emotional and family scars continue to haunt them and their children, their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren? Even during this epidemic, because the virus causing COVID-19 originated in China, Asian Canadians are treated with hate, and not just in Vancouver. Indeed, one politician echoed the sentiments of some racists in our country, questioning whether Theresa Tam was loyal to Canada or not. Sorry, I lost my, uh, my place. <laughs> all, and, and her loyalty was questioned all because she was born in Hong Kong, ignoring her sterling service for public health care in Canada. This racism goes back over a century, but the worst of it was during the Second World War. In fact, I would recommend the novel Obasan, written by Joy Kagawa, about that time of injustice in our national history. So I offer you this insight. It may seem that I'm hammering all of you over the head who are watching this fireside chat. Let me suggest you think of it as planting seeds. Now, I cannot force you to act. I'm sure there is much in what I've said that requires time to absorb. It has taken me decades to absorb it all myself. And as many of you know, I'm no paragon of virtue. I too 
struggle with what to do, with how to act, with why should I consider this my issue? It goes back to a teaching from South Africa I received through one of Bishop Desmond Tutu's daughters seven years ago. It is a way of living called Ubuntu. Simply put, it means that I am only human in relation to you. It echoes the concept in indigenous spirituality of all my relations. It means that how justice flows like a mighty river is reflected in how we treat our most vulnerable. Obviously, had we listened as we should have, we would know that black and brown lives matter because they are vulnerable. Indigenous lives matter because they have always been vulnerable to settlers. In Christian terms, it is all about self-giving, sacrificial love. As this drawing so clearly states, the difference between Jesus and us is we use scripture to determine what love means. Jesus uses love, however, to determine what scripture means. Ah, you might respond, but Jesus was the perfect man. Well, I would rather say that Jesus was fully human. As such, he made mistakes, even the mistake of carrying unexamined prejudices. Consider the story in the seventh chapter of Mark of the foreign woman who came to Jesus asking for him to heal her daughter. Jesus looked at her and only saw that she wasn't Jewish. So he replied, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Hmm. Throw it to the dogs was a decidedly nasty sentiment in those days. I cannot imagine a more casually cruel dismissal of a legitimate request. Undeterred, the woman held her head up high in hope and replied, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Jesus listened and learned. By shining a light on his prejudice, the woman taught Jesus that even he needed to pay attention to God's call for justice. After all, love is the pathway to healing. The pathway is never easy, but it is rewarding as we create new relationships that elevate our humanity through equity and injustice. May it be so, I pray. Let's join together for a moment in prayer as we close our eyes. And when you close your eyes, I want you to breathe deeply. And as you breathe in, breathe in the solidarity with others who look different, act different, are different than you. And breathe out those little kernels of racism that live within us all. And as you breathe, I want you to imagine in your mind's eye the light of Christ shining. Oh, at times it flickers there in the middle of the darkness. And yet, as you look closer, you begin to realize there are a cluster of other lights twinkling and flickering beside the one that you know is the divine. And beside all of them, as you seem to move a little closer, you begin to see the multitude of tiny sparks twinkling and sparkling and glowing with their own light. They are all of different colors, all of different shades, some more intense than others, others seeming to be calm, quiet glows. And yet together, they all make a light which shines on the landscape. And so you look down on the landscape and you see beneath you, there are other feet. And you begin to look about you and notice that we are all walking together. Together, even though it may storm, even though there may be turmoil, 
Even though the wind may blow and push us apart, still we gather together because the light draws us. The light is our connection, our bond, our purpose, our faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, it's been a pleasure to be with you today, even though the topic has been a challenging one. Speaking of challenging topics, speaking of tangles, my hair is getting longer and longer. I am so grateful for all of you who have made a special donation to Concordant United Church to celebrate our collective ministry. If you wish to make such a donation, go to our website and look for the donate button. Then designate your special gift as Gord's haircut. Now, while the hair in the picture is mark much darker than my own hair, it will certainly feel cooler once I'm completely bald. I will upload a video of the process to our YouTube channel for your viewing enjoyment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to share a blessing with you, first written by the United Methodist Bishop Woody White in 1996 for their general conference in Denver, Colorado. And now may the Lord torment you. May the Lord keep before you the faces of the hungry, the lonely, the rejected, and the despised. May the Lord afflict you with pain for the hurt, the wounded, the oppressed, the abused, the victims of violence. May God grace you with agony, a burning thirst for justice and righteousness. May the Lord give you courage and strength and compassion to make ours a better world to make our community a better community, to make our church a better church. And may you do your best to make it so. And after you have done your best, may the Lord grant you peace. Amen. Until next time, I bid you farewell. Bye-bye.